we can turn to Matthew chapter 7. I, I don't intend to reteach the same lesson from two weeks ago, but we are going to go to the very next verse, Matthew chapter 7, verse 13. And look, he'll say, I did talk to Justin a couple weeks ago, but I forget where he said he was at. Matt. I try to do contact him every now and then. Certainly, if he either needs to be saved or needs to be right with Matthew. Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 and 14. We like to look at the two gates and two ways here that Christ talks about. Verse 13 says, Hear ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way, that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. You bet. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way, which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Mm -hmm. Well, here Christ presents these two, two gates and two ways, and people often seem to misunderstand what straight gate means. But he says, the entering at the straight gate, and he says, for wide is the gate and broad is the way. <clears throat> so, we look at the wide gate and the broad way first, and then we'll come back to the straight gate. But this gate, he says, is wide. The entrance is wide and the way is broad. He says, it's Amen. lots of room to move about. It's comfortable. It's <laughs> appealing to the flesh. Amen. Well, you're not confined or constricted, you can kind of mosey along how you want to. You can... There you go. So, to the world, this is a very enticing way, isn't it? I mean, but especially in our modern day, we like comfort, don't we? Amen. And the wide way, the broad way, should I say, it is comfortable to the flesh. <laughs> there's not a lot of chastisements, there's not it's a lot of easy going compared to the the narrow way. The Bible speaks you know, a lot about the ways of God, the ways of the ungodly, but let's go to Proverbs for just a moment. Proverbs Proverbs 14, uh, one I probably quote a lot with we'll read two verses here, then we'll go over to Psalms. Proverbs 14 and verse number 12 says, There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are ways of death. Mm -hmm. Amen. And that is the way many are going today. The way which seems right unto them. The way which they think is okay, right. acceptable, but in reality, it says it's the ways of death. It's the way that leads to destruction. And that is the way, the broad way, isn't it? To, Amen. Is to do what feels good, is to do what you think is best or what you think is right. Right. And that's the world's teaching today. That just do what makes you happy. Just do what feels good to you. But that's not the little narrow way. That's Amen. The many people, they think they're right, don't they? I could turn over to chapter 21 of Proverbs. Verse 2, it says, Every way of a man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord ponders the hearts. Amen. Mm -hmm. There's not very many people we will encounter and say that their way is not right. Most everybody thinks they're okay. Say. Amen. You might find a few that say, oh, they know they're not living according to the Bible, or they're not living pleasing to God, but by and large, people are going to say, yeah, I'm doing all right. Mm -hmm. This is the Lord ponder the hearts. The Lord knows really what they're made of, isn't he? Amen. He knows what each and every one of us are made of. And even if we put on a good outward display, he knows what's really in the hearts. Amen. Many professing Christians are good at putting on a good show, if you will, but... The heart's never been changed. It doesn't matter how you outwardly display yourself. 
So on this broad way, there's lots of room for different types of ways. There's lots of room for different interpretations. There's lots of room for different you know, theories and different philosophies. Mm -hmm. There's room for all, if you will. Exactly. Isn't that the way the world teaches? We just need to be tolerant of everyone. Right. And certainly we should, in a sense, be understanding that people don't know the truth, but right. we should never accept any way but God's way as the truth. Mm -hmm. We're going, if you go over Psalms chapter 73, I'll probably get to this here soon in Adam's class, but it's one of my one of my favorite psalms that describes this Broadway very well though. Psalm 73, we'll, we'll go ahead and read the first 20 verses. It says, Truly God is good to Israel, even to such as are of clean heart. Mm -hmm. But as for me, this is Asaph writing, he says, My feet were almost gone, my steps had well nigh slipped. For I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. For there are no bands in their death, but their strength is firm. They are not in trouble as other men, neither are they plagued like other men. Therefore pride can pass them about as a chain, violence covereth them as a garment. Their eyes stand out with fatness, they have more than heart could wish. That sounds very enticing in the flesh, doesn't it? Right. We keep reading, it says they are corrupt, speak wickedly concerning oppression, and they speak loftily. Amen. They set their mouth against the heavens, and their tongue walketh through the earth. Therefore as people return hither, and waters of a full cup are wrung out to them. And they say, How doth God know? And is there knowledge in the Most High? Hmm. Behold, these are the ungodly who prosper in the world. They increase in riches. When he looks out and sees all the prosperity of the wicked, how easily they seem to have it. Mm -hmm. To the flesh, that's difficult, isn't it? When you're trying mm -hmm. to serve God, you see all these other people that are openly defying God, yet seemingly successful in the world and without much trouble. He, he begins to really doubt if he should even serve God. In verse 13, he says, Verily I have cleansed my heart in vain, and washed my hands in NMC. For all the day long have I been played in chest or chastened every morning. If I say, I will speak thus, behold, I should offend against the generation of thy children. When I thought to know this, it was too painful for me. Mm. Well, he said, I see all this prosperity, and then I see all the difficulties in my own life. And he said, surely it's all been in vain. But we can't judge the difficulties of this life and we can't judge our spiritual prosperity on the difficulties of this life. Mm -hmm. In fact, as we look at the the other way here in our text, we'll see that's probably going to be the more commonplace for the child of God. Mm -hmm. He goes on in verse 17 to say, Until I went to the sanctuary of God, then I understood therein. Surely thou didst set them in slippery places, thou casting them down to destruction. How are they brought to desolation as in a moment? They are utterly consumed with terrors. As a dream, when one awaketh, so the Lord will now awake us, thou shalt despise their image. New bad. He said he was very discouraged until he says he went into the sanctuary of God and understood therein. Mm -hmm. And from a fleshly standpoint, it could be discouraging to look out and see how the world seems to have it so good, and yet. Yeah. <clears throat> You always seem to have trouble when you're serving God. When we understand their aim, we'll understand the full picture. Mm -hmm. You get very tunnel vision, if you will. Amen. You're short sighted. Right. We go back to our text here, Matthew 7. That says, For why is the gate and brought us away that leadeth to destruction? Amen. And Asa spoke of that destruction. That is their end, is destruction. That's where the, the Broadway ends up. That's eternal destruction. To be to perish for all of eternity, to the eternal damnation, you could call it. 
Psalm 1 6 says that the way of the ungodly shall perish. Mm -hmm. oh. Ungodliness, this broad way, it always leads to this destruction, as it's called here. It always leads to this eternal torment and hell in the lake of fire. So it may seem easy when you're looking at it from this end of it, but when you get to the other end, it won't be so easy. Mm -hmm. From the world's perspective, it's, it looks like a good way to go, isn't it? Because there's right. lots of room, there's, it's comfortable, there's lots of company there. It says, for many shall go in there that. You don't have to worry about walking that way alone. Right. You can have plenty of fellowship along that way. Mm -hmm. But it always leads to destruction. It never leads to life. It never leads to God. Well, the end there is destruction. It's that eternal punishment in hell and lake of fire. Right. But so, so many today are going this way thinking they're all right. Thinking they've got it all figured out. Mm -hmm. You notice it doesn't say that it leads to the pearly gates and you know, Peter's going to give you a checklist whether you mm. made it or not. He'll lead you straight to hell. That's it. This way it says, it catches the eye of the world, doesn't it? But this straight gate, narrow way, is not very enticing to the world. We'll go on to that next. It says, because straight is the gate, narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, if either be that find it. Now this word straight, is not the same straight as you know, like straight to the back or straight as an arrow. That's S T R A I G H T. This straight is means a narrow way, a difficult way. Mm -hmm. It's often filled with affliction, as I said. If you ever paid attention in geography class, you know, between Alaska and Russia, there's the Bering Strait. Mm -hmm. So we had the Arctic Ocean to the north and the Pacific Ocean to the south and this little bitty strip of water with next one. That's <clears throat> how he describes this gate here. It's just this little narrow passageway. Mm -hmm. And it's a difficult one to enter in. He says, you know, the, the wide gate, it's easy to go in. It's always open. It's, there's always room for more. There you go. But the straight gate, it's, it's a difficult one to enter into. It's, Filled with difficulties. In fact, this word narrow, describing the narrow way, it implies that there are difficulties and afflictions. It means that you'll be confined. If you squeeze between two tight spots, you'll, you can only have room to move around as you wish to. You know, the straight way also, or the straight gate, it also be easy to describe difficult and troublesome situations if you ever heard of the saying in, in dire straits. Mm -hmm. Well, just the, the way of God in, in general is described as being full of difficulties and afflictions. Mm -hmm. To the flesh, it isn't very appealing. To the natural man, he doesn't want to go that way. I mean, the flesh, it seeks out comforts and entertainments and good times. <laughs> I don't know, one of us, I would say, we, in our flesh, enjoy afflictions, do we? Mm -hmm. And so much the more it is with the unsaved, they certainly don't want to go the way it's going to be difficult for them. But it says that this is the only way that leads to life. No. Let's go over to Jeremiah chapter 6. Jeremiah chapter... 6 and verse 16. It says, Thus saith the Lord, Stand ye in the ways, and see and ask for the old paths, where is the good way? And walk therein, and you shall find rest for your souls. But they said, We will not walk therein. There you go. So we don't need new ways. We don't need a new, a new theology or new doctrine. We just need to return to the old paths. Amen. The good way, as he describes it here. 
So the reason I've said before that the reason many people think there's multiple ways to get to heaven is because we're all on that broad way. It seems like there's more than one way. There you go. Amen. But this narrow way, it, it doesn't leave any room for turning to the left or to the right. No, we need to return to the old past, the, the good way. I'm not talking about the 1950s either. <laughs> I'm talking right. about that's the way a lot of Baptists seem to think of the old, the good ways and the old paths are. But well, we need to return back to God's ways. Amen. The way which the I said all the way in word all the way back to Genesis, but. All throughout the New Testament, during the time of Christ, he describes how we ought to live in this world. So that is the path we need to be seeking out. That's the way we should be going. So we're buying one heart. People are just like the Israelites here. They said we will not walk there. Man. That's it. People don't want to walk in the ways of God. They don't want to walk according to his word. So it's not comfortable to the flesh. It's not enjoyable to the flesh. Amen. As we looked at recently, we have to bring this flesh into subjection. Don't we? Amen. We have to rein in the flesh, if you will. Mm -hmm. and with the, I was thinking on this, that there's the broad, the broad way, the wide gate, the straight gate, and the narrow way. The, the straight gate is often Overlooked, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Over on uh, York Road and close to where I grew up, there's uh, this big house. It's even got a pool in the middle of it. The house <laughs> goes around the pool. Mm -hmm. and they got this brick entranceway with an automated gate. You just go up and you push the button. I have to deliver packages there sometimes. And they're nice folks, but people notice that. Then you go around the corner and there's a house with a little chain link fence. You know, no one notices that. Right. You pass on by that like it's nothing. But so it is with the Broadway. Everyone will talk about that, won't they? Mm -hmm. Everyone will talk about the wide gate and how appealing it is. But people pass on by the straight gate like it's insignificant. Mm -hmm. And so we're just like the little chain link fence gate, no one pays any attention to it. It's, but everyone knows is the one that stands out, don't they? Because it's what entices the flesh is what people talk about usually. Mm -hmm. But they fail to realize that there's nothing good behind that wide gate. There's nothing good at the end of the Broadway. There's nothing there's not too much good that you can get. It doesn't require some effort and some work on your part. Amen. Certainly salvation is full and free in the person of Christ. It will get to, but serving God in this life will take effort. It will take work. It's not all a bed of roses as the same goes. Let's go over to Titus for just a moment. There's obviously the whole New Testament describes how we ought to walk in this life, but Titus seems to sum it up very well here in Titus chapter 2. Verses 11 through 14, he says, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us to deny ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Amen. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify in himself the pure people zealous of good works. Amen. See, the way of God is not open to interpretation like the, the broad way is. It's very defined. That's why it's described as a narrow way. I said here summarizes it as. We need to deny ungodliness and worldly lust. We should live soberly, righteously, and godly. And then he goes on to say that he, we are to be a peculiar people, zealous of good works. But 
I know we could get into a lot of the details of what all those things mean, but it doesn't seem like there's a lot of room for living how you want to in that, is there? Right. You have. Know. Well, certainly we have liberty in Christ, but that's, we're not to use that liberty for occasions of the flesh. Amen. Well, we live under grace, but that grace is not a license to sin. But God tells us very plainly in His Word what His way is, what, how we are to conduct ourselves in this life. And there might be a few, some hard to understand areas. There might be some gray areas, as you will we'll call them, but there's a lot less than the world wants to think there is. Mm -hmm. God is very specific about how we are to live and how to conduct ourselves. To live soberly, righteously, and godly means we cannot be influenced by this world. We cannot live like the world and fulfill those three requirements. We cannot be a peculiar people, zealous of good works, if we're living in sin and living according to the world's ways. Amen. So this narrow way, it, it confines the flesh. The spirit enjoys it, but the flesh doesn't. But it's the only way that leads to life, as our text says. Mm -hmm. Going back to our text where it says, Straight is the gate, narrow is the way, which leadeth them to life. And that is eternal life, just like... <laughs> Just like the destruction of the Broadway is eternal destruction, this life is e eternal life. Mm -hmm. In John 3.16, we all know that. And whosoever believeth on the Son of God shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Christ is the way, the truth, and the life, isn't he? Amen. John 14, verse 6 tells us that. And then over in John 10, he says that he is the door. The only way into the, the straight gate and the narrow way is through Christ. Mm -hmm. The only way to stay on that way is through Christ. He is, really he is the way. He is the fulfillment of the, that way. And really the whole embodiment of it. It's only through him that we can have this life that he speaks of here. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid there's many dead professing Christians today and they don't right. realize it. It's because they're comfortable and they, they've eased their conscience perhaps. You have to do a lot more than just ease your conscience to be right with you gotta. Amen. Well, our text ends here with, and few there be that find it. It said most people pass by the straight gate and don't even Pay no mind, they don't think it a second thought. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying there's only a handful of people going to heaven like the Jehovah's Witnesses say, but in comparison to those that will be eternally damned, there's a whole lot less, I think. Amen. You know, many go in the wide gate, few go in the straight gate. Amen. And really, you can't enter it in of your own power. The flesh refuses to enter in that way. Mm -hmm. Really, it's too difficult for it. It's too unenjoyable for it. It's too contrary to it. Mm -hmm. But go through Christ, we can enter in that way. Really, it's only through Him that we can even walk according to that way. The people on the Broadway, they might try to pretend like they're on that narrow way, but soon enough they'll fall off, they'll waver to the one way or the other. Mm -hmm. Like I said, as, as the salad's washed, we'll turn to our wallet in the mire, so it happens none of them. Mm -hmm. Oh, if you're really on this straight gate, or if you really entered into this straight gate, really on this narrow way, it may be difficult, it may be full of afflictions and trials, but it leads unto life, eternal Amen. life. 
As Paul said in Romans 8, for I reckon that the sufferings of this life are not worthy to be compared to the glory which shall be revealed in us. Mm-hmm. When we get like Asaph and we look around the world and see how easy they have and how difficult we have it trying to serve God, when we understand the end of things, you'll realize all the afflictions and trials of this life will be worth it. Amen. And all the pleasures of sin will not be worth what they bring. So just looking from this world's perspective, the broad way is much more enticing. The straight gate and narrow way is not appealing at all. That's right. But when you understand the end of each one of these, the broad way may be full of pleasures and enjoyments, but it leads to eternal suffering. Mm -hmm. The narrow way may be full of afflictions and hard times, but it, le it leads to the eternal glory in the presence of God. Mm -hmm. And so shall we ever be with the Lord? Amen. You know, see, it doesn't say it leads to heaven, even though it ultimately does lead there. People get that confused about this text also. Mm -hmm. Heaven is not our goal. Really, Christ is our goal, isn't it? Amen. Certainly heaven is a, a reward, if you will. It's a, a benefit of being born again. But to be with Christ is what we ought to long for. Amen. But where I am, there ye shall be also, Christ said. Whether that's in heaven or on the new earth or wherever it may be, as long as we're with him is all that should matter to the child of God. We have two roads set before you, and I'm not trying to offer up an Armenian decision of salvation, but you can choose to go the one way or you can choose to go the other. Mm -hmm. So the flesh is always going to choose the broad way. That's it. That's what its nature enjoys. So if you're a child of God, how, how we ought to be on that narrow way. Mm -hmm. That's the only way to lead to life, and it only comes through the person of Christ. And you can try to be on good behavior on the narrow, on the broad way. That's not the same as walking the narrow way. Mm -hmm. you know, there's a saying, I just heard a couple of different ways, good behavior or good morals, they might keep you out of jail, but they won't keep you out of jail. There you go. You know, living under God through Christ, that's the only way that one can be really delivered from hell, but really they're delivered from sin. And hell is just the end goal for sin. Hell is where all those that die in their sins end up. Mm -hmm. But sin is the problem. Hell is not the problem. But if you're still in your sins, you're still lost. No matter how good of a person you may be, no matter how good be, Goodly behaved you may be, no matter how many times you may go to church. Uh, we don't have any visitors here today, but it wasn't that long ago people came to church on Easter and Christmas. Right. I would say hell is probably going to be full of a lot of people that even church, attend church every Sunday. So mm -hmm. that excuse is not what will save you. If you've never been delivered from your sins and you're still on the Broadway. Amen. You might deceive yourself and think you're doing good, but except you be born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. So believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Is still the command. Amen. Yeah. Not any of these other things that man has came up with. And let us seek the straight gate and the narrow way. That's the only way that leads to life. Really, the only way to find it is through the person of Christ. <laughs> Well, I pray that you know Christ today. Let's go to